The opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of either Spectrum Generations or Time Warner Cable. Mature Lifestyle is made possible by Knowlton Hewins Roberts Funeral Homes and Cremation Service. Our homes are warm and welcoming, and we take care of you and your family like we would our own. Call us anytime. We are here for you. Hello, welcome to Mature Lifestyles. Spectrum Generations brings a host of interesting programs for you to look at, and today is no exception. We have some extraordinary guests, I might say, some famous people. We have Ben, and Ben is the founder and the executive director of the Camden International Film Festival. So we're really honored to have you here. And then we have Tina, who really knows a whole lot about how films and all the other things that she does to make sure that we're aging well and enjoying life. And I can't wait to talk to both of you. And as I understand it, Ben, first of all, tell me what is the Camden International Film Festival? And we'll talk more about what you're doing with these movies in a moment. But tell me a little bit about what you do. Right. Um, the Camden International Film Festival is a documentary exclusive film festival that takes place in Camden, Rockport, and Rockland, Maine, usually the last weekend of September. So um, it's September 25th to 28th this year. We will be celebrating our 10th anniversary, which is kind of an exciting milestone for myself. And you started I started it, yeah. I grew up in Camden ago, and yes. um, was it, you know, trying to find ways to um, build a career myself within Maine yes. um, and in film and thought, uh, you know, the, the Mid-Coast region has historically Perfect. has been a wonderful arts community and, and figured that the cinematic arts needed their their uh, their, sh their spotlight, and um, it was it's been a wonderful th thing to see the whole organization grow. We screen about 80 films, 40 features, 40 shorts. We bring in about 50 filmmakers from all across the world. We have an industry component oh that's goodness. about a three-day conference, a media conference that runs in collaboration with the festival. So it's um, it's now effectively doubling the town of Camden. We bring in about oh 8,000 attendees. And it's been a you know, real joy to see the town embrace it the way they So have. people come from all over as well as from Maine. So we all have a lot to look forward yeah, to. Yeah, definitely. And so will there, there'll be more publicity a little bit later about what films will be there? Yeah, or? we usually lock our program towards uh, the beginning of September. Uh, the, the film festival cycle is unique. It starts in the U.S. in January with Sundance. But we're able to pull, up, pull a lot of films from later in the cycle, Toronto in September. So we're really trying to get the most diverse program we can and obviously the, the largest films we can and the, most, right. the, the best quality work. And one more thing about you, I know that you're probably modest, but I have to say that you've been recognized as a young leader, an emerging leader, so many things in this area. And it's very exciting to have you doing all this in Maine and focusing on aging well. Mm -hmm. Tell me how in the world a young, successful producer, <laughs> are you a producer as well? Uh, well, I mean, to an extent. Yes. I mean, I produced, uh, produced the festival and okay. I, I work a lot with filmmakers with projects and development. And I'm sure. going to ask you to tell me that because I want to come to Tina to see why she's so interested in what you're doing. How about the aging issue? Yeah, uh, you know, the aging issue is something that my um, my partner, Sean Flynn, who works on the conference component with me at the yes. festival, we're, we were constantly thinking of ways um, to expand our footprint across right. the state yes. and throughout the year. Uh, we didn't really want to be kind of pigeonholed into a four-day festival that would kind of come and go and, and okay. leave audiences, uh, you know, forced to have these conversations in isolation or, you know, the, the issues that the films raised demanded this kind of um, engagement. And so the, um, the Aging in Maine screening tour came out of a day-long component at the festival called the Engagement Summit. The Engagement Summit was an idea to um, basically find ways for nonprofits across the state to come together and incorporate media. So we brought 14 organizations from across the state, all focused on the issues of aging. To, to the festival. Uh, we had a nonprofit partner called Working Films, which focuses on grassroots social issue campaigns around documentaries. We brought them in from North Carolina, held a nine to five kind of day long yeah. summit yes. with these 14 organizations. And then from there, built out a year long aging and main screening tour that uh, collaborates with Spectrum Generations right. and many other organizations. Not so much to just bring a film, but plug into a, um, an issue or a calendar event that, that is already on, on the books with these organizations to enhance what they're already doing. 
And so that's kind of... Um, that's a very exciting concept. This is your first year of doing that. It's the first that. year. It's okay. the inaugural engagement summit. I think it's, it's unique for really any festival. Uh -huh. um, the issue of aging obviously came, came well, very quickly. We knew it was, you know, Maine's the oldest state in the country. Uh, but the Port and Press Herald had a phenomenal um, kind of year-long uh, campaign. at that issue. And, yeah, and so we, we thought, uh, as, as people who promote storytelling, that we could plug into you know that that conversation in a way that would be unique in the sense that it would be statewide. So Tina, that's the perfect segue for you because yeah. that's what you do. You work with people who are aging in Maine. Tell me about your job first of all at Spectrum Generation. I'm the health and wellness and family caregiver specialist with Spectrum Generation. I've been there two years. Um, I've been a social worker for 25. Right. And the reason Spectrum Generation is very interested in this is because we deal with an aging population and we, we want to promote a healthy aging population. And this film brings us right into it that... Well, tell me a little bit about the film and what, have you, what are you doing as part of this wonderful outreach effort? The Age of Champions, is that the film? Yep, which is going to be May 10th at the Muskie Center in Waterville and we're going to present the film and then I'm going to facilitate a, a talk after the film um, to engage elderly, older Americans of how they can stay healthy. Okay, what? this is not just some boring film about <laughs> old people, is it? Tell me what it is, Age of it's, Champions. It's Why a, would I want to come it's, to it's, that? It's, <laughs> you know, that's one of the things that's probably the question we get asked the most is, you know, how do you make this, this these films compelling, engaging, not depressing? Uh, I mean, we have a standard at the festival uh, for, for screening high quality, um, yes. you know, work that is focused on the craftsmanship behind nonfiction storytelling. So every film that we screen and is a partner of this, this tour, in some ways has gotten, been vetted by, okay. by our programmers. <laughs> uh, this is a film that I actually saw two years ago, three years ago maybe, at a festival called Silver Docks, or formerly called Silver Docks in the nation's capital in DC. And it's uh, by a group of young filmmakers, they call themselves a kind of documentary foundation. And it's, it's a phenomenal piece of films, three seniors, but uh, through their, their training for the Senior Olympics. So you have a 97-year-old pole vaulter, <laughs> swimmers, and, and it's a great film because it yes. is, um, you know, it's a heartwarming, touching kind of, kind of documentary, but also it adds to the idea of, you know, volunteerism and that's the fact that seniors can stay active um, right. as, they, as, they, as they age. Which is very much part of what you try to do, right. the wellness aspect. Right. right? We, want, there's, we don't want people to fear aging, that aging yeah. is, is a natural process and it doesn't mean we have to stop living. It sounds like you have three Olympians here. <laughs> they're they're Olympians. in better shape than I am, no question. <laughs> and tell me, how do you get people to come? How do they know about this program? Um, is it just in Waterville? Are there filmings? I mean, Age of Champions is at the Muskie Center, but there are other films as well. Yes, our, the one we're just mm. sp specifically talking about is the, the Muskie Center one, and yes. that's, there's, that's the second film in their festival, and so they're going to go out through the rest of Maine to present the rest of them. Um, for ours, we're, go we're doing pub you know, public relations. We're talking to everybody. We're sending out flyers. Um, it'll so be is it advertised. open to everybody? It is open. Is it, it is expensive? No, nope, it, it is wonderful. free. <laughs> it's going to be free, and well, we're going to have light tuned. refreshments. We've just been offered something <laughs> free and exciting, and we'll be right back to tell you more. Life should be celebrated. It's a special day when family and friends gather together to celebrate the life of a loved one. A celebration of life helps us honor our loved one and keep our memories alive. Whether you're planning a traditional funeral, a creative celebration of life, or a blend of both, at Knowlton Hewins Roberts, we are truly committed to meet the personal and unique needs of you and your family. Knowlton Hewins Roberts. Visit us online or visit our two locations in Augusta and Winthrop. Spectrum Generations. Live healthy, live well. Get answers, get connected. Spectrum Generations, specializing in the art of aging. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean.
give up. Go back to the Dome Star. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Maine is honored to be called home for over 150,000 veterans. Unfortunately, many eligible veterans are not aware of the benefits they so bravely earned. Hello. I'm First Lady Ann LePage. The Bureau of Maine Veterans Services is reaching out to veterans and their families who may be eligible for compensation and health care. Please call the number listed below to see if you may qualify. I thank you for your service to this great state and nation. Don't let the valuable benefits you have earned go unused. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS? Are you struggling to make ends meet because you owe more in taxes than you can afford to pay? The IRS is relentless and will collect from you. They can garnish your wages or place a levy on your bank account. You have rights and you can stop them by calling the tax resolvers. If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, our qualified CPAs, tax negotiators, and support staff know the law and know how to get your situation under control legally and permanently. Call the number on your screen now and we will contact the IRS on your behalf. Help you end wage garnishment, stop collection calls, remove tax liens, resolve tax penalties, and reduce the amount you owe if you qualify. It's a free call and a free consultation, but we can only help if you pick up the phone and dial the number below. You wouldn't fix your car without going to a mechanic, so why face the IRS without an experienced company that can help you? If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, call now and find out how we can help you resolve your IRS problems. Call the tax resolvers at 800-506-1960. Welcome back to Mature Lifestyles. We don't just talk about movies. We're going to show you a trailer for one you're not going to want to miss, Age of Champions. Stay tuned and watch this trailer, and we'll be right back. On your mark. There. The idea is to compete, and you don't have to win, but whenever you do win, it's a nice feeling. Winning is everything, Brad. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Good guys finish last. <laughs> I am Roger Gettleholm. I am now 100 years old, and I understand that the fellow that I'm playing today is only 94 years old. So I'm playing the youngster again. You know the guy that beats him is a guy named Adolf Hoffman. He's one of the best athletes I've ever seen. And he beat me bad in most of them, but he cheated a little bit in the javelin. One, two, three, javelin! Every time we go to a tournament, we know the teams that we're coming up against are just as ready to play as we are. They're getting tougher and tougher and meaner and meaner. Defense. Just courage and faith and strength. That's where the inspiration comes from. They want both of us with a with a pacemaker showing. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that an exciting trailer? And you're going to want to go. Tell us more about Age of Champions. Well, yeah. I mean, again, I think it's it's. It's a powerful film in the sense that it opens up a conversation around mm -hmm. um, not not fearing aging and, and the fact that um, you know keeping keeping active, staying healthy. Um, you know, obviously, it's a, May is a great great month to yeah, to yeah. explore this issue. And one of the things we're we're realizing as we as we've kind of gone through the the aging tour is that Mainers are you know these kind of like independent spirit, exactly. uh, strong willed individuals, <laughs> and um, I've really appreciate a lot of the feedback what we've got from from some of the attendees in the sense of hey you know I'm I'm still extremely active in my community my wife is this I'm doing this and so I really think that this film is going to um, make an impact and provide an opportunity for for hopefully the, the a large All contingency right. in Waterville That's to engage. That's a fabulous movie so we're going to talk more about other opportunities stay tuned we'll be back with more of this exciting show. Mom, 
Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Maine is honored to be called home for over 150,000 veterans. Unfortunately, many eligible veterans are not aware of the benefits they so bravely earned. Hello, I'm First Lady Anne LePage. The Bureau of Maine Veterans Services is reaching out to veterans and their families who may be eligible for compensation and health care. Please call the number listed below to see if you may qualify. I thank you for your service to this great state and nation. Don't let the valuable benefits you have earned go unused. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS? Are you struggling to make ends meet because you owe more in taxes than you can afford to pay? The IRS is relentless and will collect from you. They can garnish your wages or place a levy on your bank account. You have rights, and you can stop them by calling the tax resolvers. If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, our qualified CPAs, tax negotiators, and support staff know the law and know how to get your situation under control legally and permanently. Call the number on your screen now, and we will contact the IRS on your behalf. Help you end wage garnishment, stop collection calls, remove tax liens, resolve tax penalties, and reduce the amount you owe if you qualify. It's a free call and a free consultation, but we can only help if you pick up the phone and dial the number below. You wouldn't fix your car without going to a mechanic, so why face the IRS without an experienced company that can help you? If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, call now and find out how we can help you resolve your IRS problems. Call the tax resolvers at 800-506-1960. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-805-5690 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry. Call 1-800-805-5690. Call now. Welcome back to Mature Lifestyles. We're having a great discussion about film and discussions about aging well in Maine, helpfully. Uh, now, I'm a little bit exhausted after watching those extraordinary Olympians, and I know I can't do that, but I'll bet you there are other films that are going to inspire me and to talk about things, and I could try to be a little more athletic, I, I admit that. <laughs> but tell me a little more about some of the films and the, that you'll be seeing around the state as we have this conversation on aging. Yeah, uh, so the aging tour is about halfway through, and uh, initially we had wanted to do about five to seven screens across the right. state. Uh, we're now up to about 14, 15. Um, so it's, it's, it's for, for us, we feel it's been successful in the sense that nonprofits across the, across the state are reaching out and saying, hey, how can we get this film here? How can we get this film there? Um, and plugging it in with what they're it's trying to, the, the conversations they're having at the community level. The, the kind of the foundational film that we focused on initially was a film called The Genius of Marion. And that is a film uh, by Banker White, a filmmaker from uh, San Francisco, and his wife, Anna Fitch. And it really chronicles the first chapter of his, his mother's, aunt, um, Banker's mother, uh, with Alzheimer's. Oh, and dear. so it's been a really interesting uh, film to plug into. Probably, I'd say, two thirds of the screenings are based around that specific film. But beautifully yeah. done and it really focuses on um you know it's a it's a film about alzheimer's but it's also about caregiving as well right, and, and families. You know, families coping it must with be extraordinarily issues. important and the conversations that occur after the film remarkable have got to be absolutely uplifting. remarkable we had uh, uh you know 250 people at the portland museum of art oh my. in collaboration with the geriatrics conference um that main, main medical center and main health provide right. and we actually incorporated the filmmaker into some of the breakout sessions and so really experimenting with how media can engage um, conversation around the aging issue, Probably putting a new face on it. Probably better than any other medium in well, terms of engaging people. First, they're made comfortable. 
and their experience and the beauty of the right. film. You have this emotional attachment. Exactly. And there's something that uh, I think audiences can plug into uh, that, you know, if sometimes a, a story, a it, research it, yeah. paper, or a panel and might And it not ends work. the isolation you might feel as you're dealing with this issue. Exactly. You have stories of people who've been to the films. What are some of the success stories and things that you know about in terms of people having these discussions, whether um, it's using film or some other medium? We were able to use the films um, to be able to promote some health expos, some presentations. Yes. Um, we have a health advisory council and we also do advocacy alerts. Um, with this, we, Spectrum Generations and it, the other area agencies on aging offer a, an abundance of programs. Um, one for specifically the Alzheimer's and dementia, we have the Savvy Caregiver Program, mm -hmm. which specifically targets caregivers, um, and it want, it takes them through a six-week course of you know defining the dece disease, defining what caregiver means, um, trying to prevent breakout because most of our loved ones want to remain at home as long mm -hmm. as possible and be as ind independent as possible. Um, with the Age of Champions, that brings us into. Um, some of our evidence-based programs, we have um, our Living Well for Better Health, we have a Chronic Pain, we have the National Diabetes Prevention Program, uh, the actual Diabetes Program, and a Matter of Balance. And with the four of those programs, we're helping people um, take better health, a better care of right. themselves, and put themselves as, as self-managers, giving them the opportunity to come out and fully blossom the way they need to blossom. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So in addition to getting inspired to lead healthier lives and to be more athletic and engaged, you're giving people options. If you got this problem, this is how we can overcome it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and so it sounds like an extraordinary opportunity and you're finding it very helpful to your mm -hmm. nine. Yeah, we, uh, one success story is a woman came to class with weight um, and depression issues. Um, she was socially afraid of how others saw her, so she yes. remained home, which which led to isolation. Did, yeah. During the class, you could see her um, empowering herself to take control of her eating habits, huh. um, and it made a positive change to, towards her losing weight. Um, as the weight loss was happening, you could see her confidence her build up, mm -hmm. and so she was better able to talk about what was happening and the, mo and the emotions behind it. Um, you know, it was the first steps of, of making lifelong changes. Mm -hmm. That's extraordinary because people are alone on those journeys sometimes and this, you are opening doors to bring people together. Well, I've learned two things uh, from this program so far and it's, you know, we're, we, we've been working with our, most of our partners since September um, and we're going to continue actually for another year. Um, so this the, aging one will go yeah, on with the realization because there's so much to cover, well, isn't there really? Well, there's so much really? to cover and I think the, the, the success uh, relies on the partnership between, and, you know, us and, they and want our more. partners. Yeah. They want more. And we're just, we're really just kind of getting at the, the you know, the surface of, of, of those relationships. But um, again, it, it's, it's really how, how we can partner better with the organizations yes. and really understand their constituents, what they're pushing, um, their mission, and, and how we can plug in and not just kind of throw a film here and say, well, we'll screen enjoy. it. Yeah, enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> but really kind of getting into the curriculum and, and um, and understanding that each, each community is completely different, whether they're rural, closer to Portland, they're, sure. you know, you're facing ma uh, many different issues. And the other, the other reality is, is um, the, you know, uh, the area agencies are phenomenal in the sense of resources that they provide afterwards. So, um, right, that's an important point, isn't huge. it? Because yeah. you wanted to begin a discussion, not just have a one day right. discussion. We have no, film. I mean, we, are, we run a film festival, we're involved yes. in making films, but we don't have any experience um, in this particular field. And so we're, what we're, we feel we can be successful is um, creating this intergenerational dialogue, bringing new people to, um, to, to really have a conversation about these issues, ideally families together, so that they can use the resources that the communities have uh, to better understand uh, whether it's Alzheimer's or caregiving or elderly driving and the issues around that. Um, there, there seems to be uh, just a number of resources and, and the great thing about it is, is um, I, I don't know if you could find a better connected uh, organizational structure within the state um, in the sense that every aging organization right. seems to work together. Uh, they, they piggyback off one another. They're, they're receptive to collaboration. So it's really made this... It's this, a perfect this a, partnership yeah, for you. Yeah, for sure, exactly. Uh, well, it seems to me that you have 
found something that's working very well. So I just have to know one little bit more about you. In high school, were you making films then? <laughs> uh, I, I made a few films. Um, I think they've probably been taken off YouTube at this point. Is that right? Um, <laughs> relatively experimental. Um, but uh, I got into film, yeah, through actually, there was a film that Stephen, uh, Stephen King was making called Thinner. It was shot in Camden. Oh. And uh, it was right on my street, so I, to get into town and to work at the time, I had to pass Every by. Every day. And I like to consider myself this kind of, uh, uh, you know, well, I was a PA in my own mind, obviously. They didn't, they didn't hire me, but I wanted to be a production assistant so very badly. So I spent most of my waking days and nights following the crews around uh, wherever they were shooting, whether it was three nights in Cushing or, you know, they were all over the place. And uh, after, after a while, they kind of took us in, to my, me and my friend in, and gave us some food. And, you know, were really, really helpful. <laughs> you and showed us, part showed of us the ropes, yeah. And, and from then on, I think it was just the excitement and the experience right. of, of, of watching the magic of cinema happen. Strangely, I don't work in narrative at all. I'm you don't. I, only documentary. So, well, that's um, wonderful, though. And yeah. it's wonderful to see your passion <laughs> that you're using to give back. <laughs> and that's the kind of thing you look for. There's no reason that some of these seniors couldn't get interested in film at any age. At any age, or if you anything. You can be in the Olympics. You can be <laughs> making documentaries. You can be anything you want to be. There's nothing out there that says that we have to be the same person our whole entire life. Um, we are always looking for volunteers. There's a number of different areas at Spectrum Generations that we that we could use volunteers in their expertise um, to help us educate the public about what we do. Right. Um, we also have a whole bunch of different departments within Spectrum Generations. We have the um, Adults Disabilities Resource Center who can answer numerous and any kind of questions that you would have. And um, we also have the Adult Day Program. We have the Family Caregiver Section. Um, Meals on Wheels we offer. Um, so there's lots of different areas that we can help people. And it's not just Spectrum Generations. There are other area agencies on aging right. throughout Maine. Um, and it's easy to find. And if they can't, they can call us and we will give them the number. And it seems to me a wonderful partnership because through the documentaries, through these human mm -hmm. stories that we're all thinking, but we don't quite have the ability to tell them as you do as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it seems to me an extraordinary opportunity for the public to connect. I think so. I mean, I, you know, the, the, there's a reason I think why documentary is is kind of exploding and having a golden age. It is, will, isn't it? A renaissance, and I think it's because um, the the we're all storytellers. I mean, and it's you know, in this day and age, everyone with your phone or whatever it is, your Facebook page, we all have this kind of um, desire to share our stories. And documentary is. Well, while you, it, what's the most interesting story that you've discovered through this one? effort you're making is there a person that sort of just knocked your socks off <laughs> you know one of my one of my favorite films that we're screening and uh, it's not um, it's not being screened as much in this this tour it's a, it's a film called last dreams and it was actually shot in in Denmark uh, and follows three women through um, hospice hospice care and wow. you know the last month of their lives yes but the relationship between the filmmaker and the subject yes um, it's a really complex issue that I think he was facing, but he did it with such um, honesty and sincerity. And it was the subtle moments of the film. You know, it's Danish, so it's very slow. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, but there were these hints of life that were, you know, this, these bright spots. And this otherwise one would seem to be, uh, you know, a relatively challenging film that really stood out. And when you when you saw those moments. Uh, you just really could get a sense of the beauty of the, the three women that were dealing with, you know, rather challenging issues. And, um, you know, we, we actually had the filmmaker come to the festival. It was his world premiere at Camden last year, yes. and it won an award. And uh, it's been kind of a, a mission of mine to get that film out there uh, more, more across the it state. It touched you deeply. Yeah, And it was you were emotional. able to bring the filmmaker. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm sure, and we're going to have to stop on that note. What an exciting time in Maine. Talent. We thank you so much for being with us, and I know you're going to love Age of Champions and all the other movies that are part of this festival.